Hello everybody, this is George Ponder for WPCentral.com. Got a video over, overview for you today. This go around, we're taking a look at, the, at your Windows Phone camera settings. Now the settings on your camera will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. What's on the Samsung may be a little bit different than what's on the Nokia Windows Phones, as well as the HTC Windows Phones. For this, we're going to use the HT, HTC Titan 2, simply because it has seems to have the, the largest range of settings of any of the Windows Phone cameras. It may not cover all the bases, but it's going to cover most of them. What we don't cover in the video, we'll cover in the post. Now, let's go ahead and start it off with the panorama and burst shots. This is, a, I want to say exclusive, but it's native to the HTC Windows Phone cameras. Now, the panorama shot, it's great for landscapes. You take three pictures of a landscape, it'll stitch them together and create a wide-angled picture of your scene. It's great for landscapes and scenic pictures. Your burst shots, that's going to be focused for action settings. Uh, your kids running around the yard, your pets, maybe even some sporting activities. What the burst shot does, when you turn it on, press the shutter button, it's going to crank off five frames of images in a matter of seconds. I think the rate is right around three and a half frames per second. It'll take those five images and give you a chance to capture the action and maybe even get an action sequence. Now your scenes, these are more universal across the board. The, the big difference is what scenes are covered Again, it will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. And what scenes are, they're program modes to, to tweak your camera settings to, to better suit a particular setting or scene, such as uh, portraits, landscape, night shots, macro or close-up photography. You've got landscapes, you've got backlit photos, sports. The Titan II has about 18. You've got candlelight, snow and beach, where you'll have that haze off the beach, off the sand or the snow that you'll need to adjust for. And what these scenes do, they make those adjustments automatic. They try to tweak your settings to best suit what you're taking your picture of. You also have effects, and again, the number of effects that are on your camera will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Effects are filters and, and special, uh, special effects that can be applied to your images, your photos, to give them a little bit of a, a creative edge to it. You've got uh, grayscale filters, which turns the color picture into a black and white photo. You've got vintage effects, you have sepia tones, you've got tints, overexposure, you've got the vigent, and that's, that's the shadows that go around the edges of your picture. But again, these vary from camera to camera. You also have a lot of third-party apps that are available that'll do the same thing, and we'll have a few listed in the post. Smile capturing is a neat feature, and I've only seen it on the Titan II. What it does, you turn it on and you're, you're about to take a picture of somebody and when they smile and the camera picks up on that smile, it automatically takes the picture. Now your resolution, this is going to vary based on your sensor size. The Titan II has a 16 megapixel sensor, so it's going to have a few more settings options. My recommendation, choose your highest resolution. It's going to create a larger image file but your image quality is going to be better, and if you ever have to resize or crop that image, it's going to give you a little bit more legroom real estate to work with. Face detection, that's where the camera detects the faces in your picture, and it's going to make sure they're in focus. Now your image settings, this deals more with how your camera processes the images white balance. More times than not it's going to be set to automatic. It's going to automatically adjust that white balance to what your lighting is. But if you want to tweak that setting to a specific lighting style, cloudy, daylight, incandescent lighting, fluorescent lighting, 
Just tap on that and it'll give you your options. Brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness all deal with how the image is processed within the camera. If you want a little bit more exposure, if you want your images overexposed a little, you increase the brightness. Uh, some cameras brightness, this setting will be uh, exposure compensation or EV. It basically, like I said, over or under exposes your image. Contrast, saturation, sharpness, again, if you want to increase or decrease those levels, just go into the settings and raise or increase or decrease the amount of sharpness, the amount of saturation or contrast that the camera applies to the image. Now ISO is your light sensitivity. Bright sunny day, you're going to shoot at ISO 100. Come indoors or if it gets cloudy, your ISO is going to increase so your sensor is a little bit more sensitive to light so it doesn't require as much. The downside to this is when you get up, say, around ISO 800, 1600, you're going to start to see a little noise or grain in the image. It's not going to be that bad because these Windows Phone cameras have improved greatly over the years. But you will start seeing a little bit of decrease in the image quality when you move up the ISO levels. More times than not, it's going to be set to auto and the camera just picks what's best for that particular scene or that particular environment. Advanced settings, you've got red eye reduction. It gets the red out. What it does, the, the camera light gives you a little bit of a pulse so your, the, the back of your eyeball adjusts to the increase in light. And then you take your picture and you don't have red eye. Voila! Image stabilization, image stabilizer. It's a little bit different with Windows Phone cameras. Now with your standalone cameras, image stabilizer, it's usually a mechanical process. You've got a series of motors that keep the lens or the, the sensor steady to minimize any blur that hand movement would cause in taking that picture. Well, with Windows Phone Camera, it's not so much a mechanical solution, but rather a software solution. When you turn on the image stabilizer, the camera automatically increases that ISO level. When you increase the ISO level, you can the camera can use a faster shutter speed, basically. When you use a faster shutter speed, you have less influence on hand motion, less chance of a blur on your image. Downside again, if you increase the ISO too high, you're going to get that noise and grain in your images. You're not going to have as good a quality. So I'd use the image stabilizer sparingly. Metering modes, basically how the light meter reads the light. It's usually a center balance, an average, or a spot meter. Uh, center is that basically the center square portion of your frame. That's what's going to be metered off of. Average, it takes the average of all the sensors and comes up with a light, light reading. And then spot, it's as it sounds, one spot is where your light is measured. Your flicker adjustments, that compensates for those horizontal lines on uh, computer screens, TVs, so it doesn't show up. It doesn't impact your images greatly. Lastly, you've got your flash settings, and these are universal, often off to the right side. It's uh, flash on, flash off, and flash automatic. So there you have it, a very broad overview on your Windows Phone camera settings. Again, what's on your Windows Phone camera may be a little bit different than what's on the Titan 2, but in general it's going to be the same. They may not say brightness, it may be EV or exposure compensation. I think some of them have photo quality. That's going to be a little bit extra fine tuning to the processing, like sharpness. And it's really impressive how, how far Windows Phone cameras have advanced, not only with the hardware, but as also the software that drives the camera. And again, this is a very broad overview on the settings. Yours may vary just slightly. 
and hopefully this gives you a little bit better understanding on your Windows Phone camera. So you can go out, be a little bit more comfortable with the camera, experiment, practice, and take lots and lots of pictures.